The reason we say to be careful stepping into third-party encounters is because the stakes are so high. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Brazil. Here we're going to see an armed robbery with a man who attempts to step in to stop it. And then we'll come back and learn some lessons. I'm gonna watch these guys walk up from the top left there and the one pulls a gun and just tells her that it's a robbery. And you can see his buddies coming with him. Looks like they've just done a similar robbery somewhere else where he's got a bunch of stuff in his hands. So he's just gonna grab a bag from the counter to put their other loot. See our victim there gets poked and, and what they don't know is a guy's about to come up with a big old stick who's pretty upset with them about this. Now she's super compliant. Here comes our good guy. He's gonna whack our bad guy once, but he takes a shot right there, right in the middle of his chest. And that one is right where it ends. The good guy didn't make it on this one. These are the unfortunate consequences that can come when you step into a third party encounter. So I have a question for you out of this one. When you see a negative outcome like this, does it make you less likely to intervene or is your decision already made? Hit that poll and let me know what you think. I'm interested in how the community looks at this one. I wanna think about significant lessons out of this one, particularly about stepping into third party encounters and I'm gonna give you my advice in that arena. Number two, we're gonna look at the difference between a short range force multiplier like a machete or a knife versus a long long range one like a firearm and this is why I recommend that all self defenders carry a firearm if at all possible. And third, we need to talk today about spiritual fitness. So let's think about some significant lessons here. As this guy pulls his firearm, she's obviously working from a deficit. And the right answer here is to comply. In her case, she doesn't really have any opportunity to resist at that point, and so compliance is the right thing. However, that said, look at what the compliance gets her. She's like, I don't know what to do, and she's scared. And he takes that gun and jabs it right into her chest. Could easily have shot her here, and that's the danger of compliance. When you comply, that does not necessarily mean that you're safe, because you put your safety into the hands of somebody who is willing to point a gun at you and has absolutely no care for your well-being and thinks you are worth less than the money in the till, which is why if you're going to comply, you better have an understanding of how to launch a counter ambush if at all possible. Now, I do think that in this instance, she's just giving them what they want. That's probably her right choice. But now as our good guys coming in, we've got a couple of things that we want to think about here. And the first one is whether it is wise to step into a third party encounter. Now, I totally understand and applaud this man's bravery, but you got to think about the fact that with the negative outcome that came out of this, was this worth it? Now, if this is his wife, yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do. If this is his loved one, I totally understand it. But you gotta recognize that there could be a cost that you don't always win as a defender and therefore you gotta count the cost. And so you need to personally think about whose encounters am I willing to step into and have that set ahead of time so that you don't have to do the calculus in the moment. Now let's think about the tool that he's using here. He's got a big stick and he hits that guy and he kind of hits him on his right arm, but on the top of his right arm. And if you're gonna use a stick in any capacity, friends, a bat, whatever, a crowbar, you gotta recognize to stop an armed robber, you only have two choices. You either gotta hit his hand, arm, uh, you know, the lower arm and that hand hard enough to break it so badly that he can't use it, or you gotta cave his his head in with it. And I'm not even joking about that. He's a deadly threat. If you got a stick, you got to hit him hard enough in the head that it's going to knock him out. Otherwise, you're just going to make him angry. And that's exactly what happened here is he came back in and gets shot right there. Now our good guy has to drive in because he's got a short range tool. And that's the other problem here is he has a tool that is short range and fairly fast, but the bad guy has a tool of functionally infinite range that is very fast in a firearm. So if he can get out of, out of the, the good guy's range, he can wreak havoc on him. And that's exactly what happened here and why you gotta maintain positional dominance if you have a short range tool. Finally, friends, this good guy didn't get up this day thinking that it was gonna be his last day on earth. And I don't think most of us think it's our last day today either, but that's why spiritual fitness is so important. You gotta say what you gotta say to your family. Make sure they know that you love them. Make sure there's nothing unsaid that you don't leave on a bad note but that they know that you have done everything you can to love them. And you gotta make sure that your relationship with Jesus is strong because you don't know if, if today's your last day and you will really want it on that day. So think about those things, friends, and make sure that your spiritual fitness is strong. Make sure that you understand the use of tools. Make sure that you have really thought through stepping into third-party encounters so you can cover your ASP.